What's going on guys, Michael from GPRisers.com and in today's video I'm going to break it down for you guys on why the RTX 3070 is the new king of mining. So to stay awake today I am drinking the Dog Lord coffee in my favorite mug that says man I love farming. So make sure to check these out at Doglord.com. I am a big coffee guy so it does help me every morning brewing a fresh cup of Dog Lord coffee. So in today's video guys I am going to discuss with you guys why the RTX 3070 is the new king of mining so here at the gp risers mining bunker we are accumulating some 3070s we have a founder's edition there which is a full hash rate car but as you guys do know there is an lhr unlock now with the unlock we are able to go ahead and get the lhr cards here you can see we have a evga for the win 3 3070 lhr and so depending on the prices and everything like that we don't really mind getting lhr cards because of the unlock and in all honesty all the aibs like evga have way better coolers than the founder's editions except for Zotac. And if you guys have been watching the markets recently, you guys do know that these cards are easier and easier to get. And the prices of the 3070s and all the cards are coming down. So the mix between prices coming down and also the availability means that we are going to be expanding. So let's go ahead and switch to the desktop so I can show you guys why we are buying the RTX 3070. Now here you can see we are on bestbuy.com. Now of course the Founders Edition is sold out. However, there are other Founders Editions that are in stock such as the 3080 ti and the 3090 now once these 3070 founders editions are back in stock we are going to nab a couple of them up for a couple builds in our new r8 cases but in the meantime we probably are going to be getting cards like you see here on the screen which is the gigabyte gaming oc version now this version is on sale now and it's not really a sale it is still 600 dollars. however compared to the prices that we have been seeing this is the best deal that we've come across now it looks like pricing is getting closer to the founders editions aibs are always usually a little bit higher than founders editions and then during sales and everything like that they kind of dip to the founder edition prices or they go a little bit lower so i'm not going to go into too much detail regarding the prices of these cards currently but at the end of this video i am going to go ahead and show you guys a true roi analysis if you were to buy an rtx 3070 right now now i don't really like using the words roi analysis um because a lot of uh, people People that I've seen that do analysis like this often you know take the price of the card and how long it takes to pay it off and that is your ROI and that's simply not true so there's a difference between a payback period on the card and what your actual ROI is your ROI is going to be your return on your investment what did your initial investment end up netting you so at the end of this video I will do an analysis on this and break it down for you guys but first I am going to again explain the title of this video and that is why the RTX 3070 really is the best card for mining right now so if we jump over to the miner stat profitability dashboard now when you look at a profitability chart like this this is not actual profitability these charts that you often look at on what to mine and everything just shows you what is most profitable per card so this list that you're looking at right here is not what is most profitable rather than what card makes the most and those two things are very very different so i am going to jump on different algorithms and everything like that but we are going to start with ethereum for now even though ethereum is eventually going to proof of stake so you can see right here at the top we do have the cmp one 70 hx which has 161 mega hash at 223 watts this card is extremely efficient although it is extremely efficient i am not a fan of the cmp cards i am not a fan of i know i'm going to get flack for this but the a4000s the a5000s the a2000s i'm not a big fan of those cards because those cards are pretty much designed for specific applications now the CMP cards are specific to mining. Now the A2000s, 4000s, 5000s, whatever A1000s uh, card that you wanna kind of compare, those cards can be used for other applications like video editing or anything like that. However, when you do crypto mine for anyone starting soon, you will eventually sell these cards and upgrade them. Now the highest resale value cards are going to be the ones that can still game at high resolutions and high frames per second. So that is why here at the GP Risers Mining Bunker, we really only buy cards cards that we will be able to resell later down the line. Besides all of that, what you want to look at on these charts is the efficiency and what the efficiency means is how much mega hash or hash on whatever algorithm you're mining on do you get per watt that the gpu is consuming these as profitability gets a little bit lower on mining you have to start looking at which cards are going to be most efficient so looking right down the line the cmp cards um the 170 hx has a 0.724 mega hash per watt which is just insane now that is a great mega hash per watt but again it is a cmp card if you look at the R 
RTX 3090 Ti, that has a 0.382 mega hash per watt, which is not all that great. Uh, if you go down the line, the 3090 has a 0.418, but you look onto the right here and you see $2 a day, $1.93 a day, and that looks good, but the efficiency is really low. Now, if you jump down to the Radeon 7, you have a 0.536 mega hash per watt, and that is really good. However, the Radeon 7s are very finicky. I got uh, six of them when they first came out, and um, I don't know if I'd ever touch those cards again. They are all out of warranty currently, and those are just not on our radar here. If you look at the 3080 LHR or the 3080, both of those have a 0.437 mega hash per watt. But I'm not going to go through every card here, but if you scroll all the way down, you eventually get to number 13 and 14, which are the RTX 3070 and 3070 LHR. Now, both of these cards have a 0.52 mega hash per watt. Now, that is the highest NVIDIA card that's on here other than the CMP170HX. Now, you have the Radeon 7, which is a little bit higher, but again, those cards are out of warranty and they are old. Now, although some people do still mine on these, we just do not, again, want to touch these cards. So for mining a Ethereum, you can see here that the RTX 3070 has the highest efficiency rating on here other than the Radeon 7 and mining specific cards. But again, Ethereum is eventually going to proof of stake. So you cannot base which cards you're buying now and future proof those cards on mining Ethereum. So let's jump over to Autolycos, which is going to be Ergo. Now, if you look here, you can see the similar cards. Um, the CMPs are not on here, but we weren't going to use those either. Um, real quick, the 3090, uh, 1.014 mega hash per watt, 3080 Ti 1.215, 3080 1.214. You can actually see here the A5000 has a 0.909, so that's lower than what the traditional 3000 series cards are getting. And you see here the 3070s, which get 1.332. Now the Vega 56 actually get a little bit higher according to minor stats calculator here. But just like the Radeon 7, they are older cards, and we do not want to put those in our mining farm. So on Ergo, you have 1.33, and just scrolling down real quick, um, there is a RTX 3050, which actually gets that efficiency. However, the 3050 is not good at mining Ethereum for now, so we wouldn't look at that card. So let's switch over to Darkcoin, which is going to be ton. So going through here, uh, these numbers are a little low because they are giga hash per watt, but the 3090 gets 0.015. The 3080 Ti gets 0 0.015, 3080 0 0.013, and the 3070 gets 0 0.019. Now these numbers are all pretty low, but 0 0.019 is a lot higher than 0 0.013. And scrolling down the list here, you can also see that there is no other card that's on here um, that is as efficient as the RTX 3070. Now switching real quick over to Equihash here, and this is going to be for Flux. Now here we have a 3090, which is uh, 0.366 hash per watt, and that is pretty good. The 2080 Ti gets 0 0.345, the 2080 Super 0.329, um, and then if you scroll down here to the 3070, this is where you get the 0.353, which is not as efficient as the 3090. However, it is pretty close. And when you compare this to the other algorithms on the 3090, it would not be a wise choice to buy a 3090 to mine flux because you don't want to have a card that's locked for one algorithm. So switching over, we are going to Firo. Now with Firo, uh, the 3080 Ti has a 0.151 mega hash, 3080 0.176, 3090, 0.136, and then let's jump down to the 3070, which is a 0.194, which also matches a RX 5700. However, scrolling down here, you can also see that the 3070 is the best efficiency-wise on Firo. So let's switch over to Kapow, because Ravencoin is a very large algorithm that I feel like a lot of hash is going to move over to once Ethereum switches over to proof of stake. Now you have the 3080 Ti, 0.178, 3090.157. Uh, let's scroll down to the 3070 Ti is 0.16. And then you come down here to the 3070, which is 0.19. Now you do have the Ti, this 3060 Ti, I'm sorry, that's 0.197 because it looks like it's a little bit lower wattage uh, by two watts and a little more mega hash. I've not tested this personally, but that is very close. And again, as you scroll down through here, there is no other card that comes close uh, to the efficiency as the RTX uh, 3070, except down here, you actually the A2000 is 0.2 mega hash per watt at 69 watts. However, that is not a whole lot, about 5% more efficient 
uh, but the A2000 is just not all that great on other algorithms. And again, it's an A2000. They're, you know, reselling those cards is not going to be as great as other gaming cards. So let's switch over here to Octopus. Now, this is going to be Conflux. Uh, this is a popular mining algorithm as well. Here you have the 3090.315, 3080 Ti is 0.325, 3080 uh, kind of jumps down to 0.329, the 3080 is 0.329, the 3070 Ti is 0.242, and here we go with the 3070 again, 0.362. Now, the 3070 on here, when it comes to efficiency is the most efficient card. So as you guys can see here, there's not really any algorithm for the 3000 series cards that is as efficient as the 3070. So now that we did look at all the efficiency numbers for all these different algorithms, I do want to point out that the 3060 Ti LHRs are a lot more finicky than the 3070s. I'm not sure why, but these mining programs, I'm sure will fix it eventually. However, I don't want to purchase a whole lot of cards and put the, you know, the cart before the horse, you could say. Um, and purchase a bunch of you know 3060 Ti's anticipating that the miners will change and adapt and make it a little bit better. I'd rather purchase cards right now that I know work. So that is why the RTX 3070s are the king of mining right now. And I think that they are rock solid cards for future proofing your mining farm. Not only do they consume a low amount of wattage that you can use splitter cables on, they don't produce a whole lot of heat and they're also in comparison to other cards relatively inexpensive. But I wanted to show you guys an ROI and analysis sheet and i'm only going to do this for about two minutes just so that you guys can kind of get where my head is right now with gpu mining and why we are expanding so here you can see our excel sheet that we made i am going to be basing these numbers off of this nvidia card which is 599.99 so we will put 600 here and let's calculate the daily income right now for, we'll just use Ethereum because that is what we are mining. So if we click the RTX 3070 here on miner stat, it will bring us over. We are mining on two miners um, on ETHash. So I am going to leave this at 10 cents per kilowatt which brings us to a total of $1.15 per day per RTX 3070. So if we type in $1.15 here on our Excel sheet, that brings a payoff period of 521 days. Now let's go ahead and just round this um, the other way to 522. Now when a lot of people did get into mining, the ROI on some of these cards, even buying them at scalped prices, were sometimes two to three months. But the reality is, is when you GPU mine or ASIC mine or whatever it is, you probably are gonna be doing this for the long term. Now it is not normal for as long as we've been doing this since around 2016 to have payback periods of around two to three months. Generally for us, anything under two years is a good payback period. Now, as long as you guys aren't running these things outside and maintaining them, they should last far more than two years. So let's switch back over to the sheet guys. We have a payoff period of $522. Now, I put ROI with an asterisk right here and that is because I put an actual ROI on this side. Now the reason for that is because we have to calculate a couple more things to see what the true ROI is. So after one year you would mine $419.75. Now of course this number is today's profitability at today's Ethereum price. Now let's just say the profitability stayed the same and the price of Ethereum stayed the same. What do you think that the actual price of this card would be if you were to sell it after one year? If you could buy it new for $600 right now, what will it be worth in a year from now? Now the answer to this is almost always it's gonna be worth less than when you bought it. Unless of course you were purchasing 3000 series cards when they first came out and you you know hit those EVGA notify queues and stuff like that. A year later, those cards were worth almost double what they were when they released. However, for this video, let's just be a little bit conservative and let's say that this card is only worth half of what you purchased it for, which is a pretty conservative estimate on a graphics card like this. So if you sold all the crypto that you mined in one year with this card, that'd be $419.75. If you sold this card for half of what you purchased it for today, that means that you would have a total of $719.75. Now, if you back out the original price of the card, which is $600, that leaves you with a total profit of $119.75. Now, as you guys can see over here, the actual ROI is 19.96% or let's just say 20%. Now, these are all very conservative numbers here. And sometimes people look at a payoff period of 500 plus days and they laugh at it. But as you guys can see right here, we have a 20% ROI in one year. And from an investment standpoint, a 20% ROI in one year is still extremely, extremely good. So these numbers can change drastically. They can go up and they can go down. 
However, looking at this from a standpoint of right now, a 20% return on our investment in one year is something that we are still going to actively invest in. And by actively investing, that means we are going to be actively purchasing RTX 3070s. Not only is the RTX 3070 a great card for gaming, for crypto mining, but it is all around a future-proofed card. So guys, that is why I wanted to make this Excel sheet at the end of this video is so that you guys can see the numbers here and see why, again, we are currently expanding our mining farm and why we are choosing the RTX 3070 and why the RTX 3070 is the best card right now for crypto mining. With that said, guys, I'm not going to drag this video on that much longer. If you guys haven't joined our Discord, check that link out down below. We have a great community on Discord, and we also do giveaways on Discord as well. And as always, guys, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day, and we'll see you guys next time.